It is game week. The Hoosiers and Buckeyes meet on Saturday, and we have everything you need to know heading into the week. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. You are Locked On Hoosiers, the one and only daily IU podcast. We're part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. Big shout out to you guys for tuning in, making us your first listen, wherever that may be from. Make sure you guys download the Game Time app. Game Time's the sponsor of today's episode. You create an account and use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We're finally here. The long wait is over for a lot of IU fans who at least care a little bit about football. We've talked on and off about IU football over the last month or so, but I kind of wanted to do a reset. Some of you might be tuning in for the first time because it's game week. Some of you might have only been listening to to basketball episodes We have what you need to know. What we're going to do today are the three biggest storylines. It allows us to talk about a number of things that have played out leading up to this week. I ranked them number one first, obviously. The biggest storyline, and I think this is obvious, even if you very casually follow IU football, the biggest storyline heading into the game is who is the quarterback. Tom Allen, the team, the coaching staff, all of those guys know who the quarterback is. We do not. And that stuff hasn't leaked out in previous years. I don't suspect it is going to this season either. The decision has been made. We just don't know what it is yet. But that's going to be your biggest question throughout the week. Who is the quarterback? If I was a betting man right now, I would put money on Taven Jackson. But that being said... That's purely a guess because Tom Allen and the coaching staff, Walt Bell, everyone made it pretty clear it was a 50-50 competition through fall camp that nobody had really separated themselves. But Tom Allen announced last week, about middle of last week, that they made their decision, they know who their guy is going to be, and they'll head into that on week one against Ohio State. Your kind of brief notes about these two guys, if you do not know, Taven Jackson is the transfer from Tennessee, obviously the brother of Trace. I think pretty much everyone knows that. Uh, Saw him at IU basketball games last season. Brother of Trace Jackson Davis, former highly rated recruit out of Indianapolis. Naturally, when you go to Tennessee, you're probably a pretty high rated recruit. But Taven was a really high-rated recruit. And the Hoosiers landed him in the transfer portal as one of the biggest wins they've had, really in recruiting in general, but certainly the transfer portal. Came in with a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement, a lot of potential. And I think was probably seen as the favorite coming into the fall, into the spring, and then into the fall. Like we said, nobody has particularly separated themselves, but uh, Taven, I thought, came in with the lead. Now, his competition is Brendan Soresby, who's the kind of underrated recruit from last year. If you guys, every day is way, way back when, when we talked about that top 25 recruiting class at the time that Soresby was part of, our recruiting insider picked Soresby out of everybody as kind of his dark horse because of his talent. He was this recruit that kind of flew under the radar and really late in the process started to grab some attention and the Hoosiers landed him, has a really big arm, can make lots and lots of throws, was at IU last year, familiar with Walt Bell's offense, certainly has that upper hand. Now, I think the biggest difference in the play style between these two is Taven is a more mobile quarterback, whereas Soresby is the guy, like I said, that has the big arm, can make those throws. It depends what type of offense IU wants to run. Part of the reason I also assumed it would be Taven is because IU looked at its best last season 
when Dexter Williams was under center, you had a mobile quarterback back there. Now he was kind of the, on the extreme other end in that he struggled to throw the ball, but he was great running the ball. And so we saw what Indiana looked like then. Taven is closer to that than Brendan Sorsby is. Both guys can make plays on their feet, but Taven certainly has an edge in that regard. On the note of Dexter Williams, he's going to factor into this conversation at some point. He's not going to start the season. He's going to be practicing. He's not going to be dressing, though. But at some point, around probably week three at the earliest, I would say, probably week four, five, six, somewhere around there, he's going to be ready. And then you have a question of do you stick with whoever won the quarterback battle or do you go to Dexter Williams? I think a lot of that is going to be determined by who, how the person who is going to be the quarterback week one is playing through the first however many weeks. But this was, I, I think the coaching staff sees this as Dexter Williams' job. And when he's healthy, he will get that job back. That, again, is an assumption I'm making. But Dexter Williams didn't do anything to lose the job, and he looked good last season when he was under quarterback. The Michigan State win was improbable, but he made some plays there. He was making some plays in that Purdue game before his injury. He's going to be healthy at some point this season. That's a decision that's going to come as well. So when I say who is the quarterback, that's a multi-layered question because who is the quarterback week one through week four or five is one question, who is the quarterback in the final game of the season, is an entirely different question. There's a lot that's going to need to be unpacked there. Just because IU made a uh, decision on a starter after fall camp doesn't mean they're not going to have to make another decision on a starter. So if I had to guess right now, <clears throat> it's Taven Jackson, the starter, Brendan Sorsby, the backup, Dexter Williams is probably not going to be on the depth chart, but he's down there. Once we get to a point when Dexter Williams is healthy, we'll see. I think Taven or Sorsby would have to play really, really well for them not to turn to Dexter Williams because that'd be pretty harsh on Dexter Williams. But we'll see how things play out. They're certainly going to have the opportunities it's it's a very intriguing battle because it's one that's going to go on for a number of weeks. We'll have an answer for about three or four weeks, and then the debates can start up once again. But who's going to be the quarterback is going to be the biggest question to watch for this team. There are a lot of questions you can ask about this defense. We're going to talk about that in our second biggest storyline to watch here in a moment. First. I want to talk to you about a new sponsor, Athletic Brewing Company. It's now time for your Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like Andre Carter, who is someone we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Andre Carter, I'm sure, again, even casual fans have probably heard the name. He's going to come in. One of the biggest impactful transfers of the entire transfer portal. No caveats across the nation. He's one of the biggest transfers. And there have been all sorts of lists that have come out in the, the preseason that indicate that. He is going to be really good for Indiana, for the Big Ten, for the country. We'll talk about him more in depth here in a moment. But Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic game. Their brews are great tasting and award-winning and beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic beers at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use Locked On one word, to get 15% off your first order. That's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. Let's talk about that defense. Let's talk about Andre Carter. First, though, I want to thank you guys for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every single day. Every day or throughout this week, it's going to be some more football talk. Uh, Thursday, we're going to have our 
crossover episode with Locked On Buckeyes. Always enjoy talking to Jay. We'll talk about their own quarterback battle. They have some questions at Ohio State as well. We'll have our recruiting show on Wednesday, but we'll have plenty to talk about over the next uh, week as we lead into this big game. One of the things we're going to be talking about a lot up to and after this Ohio State game is the defense. Completely retooled defense that has very few names coming back from last season. You'll know Aaron Casey, who we'll mention in a minute. You might know Noah Pierre. Probably it, if I'm being honest. Unless you're a diehard like I know a lot of you everydayers are, there's a lot of new names that are going to come up over the first couple games this season that you're going to have to learn. The biggest name you're going to have to learn, if you're not familiar already, is Andre Carter. There's been a lot of talk during fall camp about how improved, how good the defensive line looks. And that starts both on the line and the defense as a whole with Andre Carter, who just has the look of an NFL defensive lineman. He's going to be one of the top defensive players in the Big Ten this season. He's listed at 6'5", 270. This is his final year of eligibility. He came to Indiana from Western Michigan. He was all-conference last year at Western Michigan. Uh, he spent a number of years, I believe five seasons there. Uh, four se- or Yeah, he spent five seasons. Uh, he redshirted. But he is someone that is a game-changing type defensive player. And Indiana has not had that on its defensive line in a really long time. And so he's the type of guy that can add an element to IU's defense they have not had. And that's going to be really important. There's some other guys that have jumped out, have been mentioned, Philip Bleedy, Ladarius Cox. Um, If you consider the bull position, defensive line, it's what Deshaun McCullough played. It's a really big hole, obviously, with Deshaun McCullough gone. Uh, The name that has been mentioned there is Linnell Carr, who is, uh, according to the coaching staff, maybe their best pass rusher on the team. And so he's a transfer from West Virginia. Miles Jackson played there a little bit last year. There's going to be a couple of guys you remember, but there's going to be a lot of new faces. This defense has a lot of transfers that came in, including at the linebacker position. They have a little bit more stability because they have someone in Aaron Casey who is returning after a strong year last year, probably was Indiana's best defender last season. Um, Noah Pierre kind of plays that Husky position, which is hybrid linebacker safety, but they still do have to replace Cam Jones, and that's a really big person to replace. There are a number of guys who could step up and fill some of those holes. Jacob Magnum Farrer, excuse me, another transfer. He comes from Stanford. Sounds like he's going to get a lot of minutes and maybe will be the other starter for the Hoosiers. Uh, But that position, a little bit up in the air. There's a lot of ways it could go uh, over the first couple weeks as you kind of iron some things out and figure out who's going to be able to to play and who's going to be able to hold up when the games actually start. But there's a little bit more stability there. Certainly when you look at the rest of the defense and all of the um, big questions that this team has on that side of the ball, the linebacking group is the one with the fewest. So, uh, Aaron Casey, Jacob Magnum Farr, Caden Turner, a redshirt for, uh, freshman, Matt Holt, guys that are all going to factor into this one. There is no position on this roster that has more unknowns to it than the secondary. We've talked a lot about that. Noah Pierre, we mentioned, he's going to start at Husky, and that is probably the only thing we know about this group. Josh Sanguinetti, I would assume, would be a starter at safety. He played there last season when there were injuries. Um, I don't really know outside of that. Jamari Sharp is a name that Tom Allen mentioned as one of the top 
two or three guys, he said, as a cornerback. So he's going to get a lot of snaps. I don't know who's starting at cornerback for this team. And it's really, there's really been no indication. You can look at some of the veteran guys. Uh, Jameer Johnson Jr. came in uh, as a transfer uh, from, I believe, Texas. I'm trying to find his name. Yeah, he came from Texas. Uh, he's a junior. Kobe Miner is a redshirt junior from Texas Tech. The secondary isn't only kind of an unknown quality. There's also a lot of younger guys in this secondary. So uh, you're going to see some fresh faces taking snaps for the Hoosiers. I would imagine Nick Toomer is going to factor in as well. Another redshirt junior. He's from Stanford. So there's been a ton of turnover in this secondary. We were used a long time to having Taiwan Mullen and Jalen Williams out there as the two guys, and that has changed. That is not the case anymore, and IU is going to have a lot of new faces uh, in that secondary. Not ideal an opponent to have in week one when you have no idea what your secondary is going to look like, but trial by fire. You're not going to face a tougher uh, pat or tougher group of receivers, I would imagine, this season than Ohio State. So throw them in the deep end, learn who's going to sink or swim, and move on to, to week two with some knowledge of that and figuring out who the guys who stepped up are going to be. But there's going to be a lot of questions with that secondary into week one and on past it. The one of the more lingering questions and one that ranked higher up for me earlier in the fall camp is that offensive line. I'll talk to you why I moved it down, why there's less uh, worry there for me and why I think uh, IU fans should feel a little bit better about the offensive line this year. We'll do all that here in just a moment. Let's talk about game time. The sponsor of today's episode you guys know how stressful it is to buy tickets, especially if you've been trying to buy Taylor Swift tickets or were a couple weeks ago. Uh, and that's not even trying to get tickets last minute. That is when it gets really stressful, trying to find the best prices, no idea which uh, website to use. We have it solved for you. Game Time app is honestly one of my favorite places to buy tickets. The, the feature I like the most is that when you're looking at the tickets, it shows you right away what your view from that seat is going to be. You don't have to click the ticket, click a picture, swipe through, find what they think your view is going to look like. It shows you right then and there. When they've had that event there, what's that view look like? And so you always know what type of ticket you're getting, what type of view you're getting, what type of deal you're getting. It's the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason. You can get those image of your seats before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy your tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Snag the tickets without the stress uh, with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create that account. Use the promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE and you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create your account. Redeem code locked on college, all one word for $20 off. They have IU football tickets. If you want to go down to the Ohio State game or any other game this season, use the Game Time app. Download it today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So the offensive line was a question, a source of frustration, maybe other strongly worded. Uh, descriptors over the last couple of seasons coming into fall camp they probably were the number one thing i was worried about and i think we did a a similar version of this going into fall camp where i said this starts and stops with the offensive line if they don't have things figured out there is no other debate to be had who the quarterback is who's starting where how many touches jalen lucas is getting any of that None of that matters if the offensive line stinks because we've seen that for the last couple of seasons. 
Didn't matter who was under center at quarterback. Connor Bazelak, Jack Tuttle, Michael Penix, uh, Brendan Soresby, Dexter Williams. When the offensive line wasn't good, it, then the team was bad. Donovan McCauley was taking snaps at some point there as well. So what changed? Well, I think one of the biggest things is that the new offensive line coaches made a positive impact. Bob Bostad came in from Wisconsin. And honestly, if you're looking to replicate any program's offensive line, there are few better, maybe none better than Wisconsin. So that alone just had great vibes to the hiring and he's come in and by all accounts, this offensive line has looked drastically improved, which is such a positive. And even if some of that's overblown because of who they're, because they haven't played in games or anything, the fact that we're not worried about this offensive line right now and that there haven't been warning signs fired off is a really big positive. We know the skill positions are going to be fine. We mentioned Jalen Lucas. We've talked about his other running back mates, Josh Henderson, Christian Turner. All three of those guys are going to play a lot. Cam Camper, EJ Williams, uh, whoever it might be, Cameron Turner, Dequise Carter, a lot of names to remember at the receiver spot. Donovan McCauley, maybe, hasn't been a lot of buzz about him, but maybe he factors into that as well. We know those are going to be fine. The offensive line, if they are good, takes a lot of pressure off the quarterbacks as well because it eases the some of the worries they have about running for their lives. How many times have we seen the quarterbacks the last couple seasons have to uh, get out of the pocket? And then that has effects of having the fire feet. And anytime pressure comes, they're not staying in the pocket. They're dipping out of there. Anytime they think they feel pressure, they're gone. A good offensive line lessens a lot of that and allows a quarterback to be more of a game manager, which is if that is what you're asking your two redshirt freshmen, either Taven Jackson or Brennan Sorsby to be, it, it feels a lot better. I use best player on offense is Jalen Lucas. So if you have an offensive line that can open up holes for him, you're helping your best player. This is a group that largely returns everybody from last year. And we talked about whether that was a good or a bad thing when the group was so bad. I think it's going to be a good thing because their approach seems to be different. You have that mix of familiarity. You have some new blood that's going to factor in. And you have a new coach that's kind of changing their approach as well. Matthew Bedford being healthy is going to be a huge help. He went down on week one last year, and we probably didn't talk about that enough as being a factor in why they struggled. But if losing one offensive lineman means you have one of the worst offensive lines in the country, it wasn't going to be a good offensive line anyway. Khalil Benson, redshirt junior. Zach Carpenter, redshirt senior. Mike Kadich, redshirt senior. That's going to be your right uh, right tackle, right guard, center, left guard. Those names I've mentioned. The interesting spot is it sounds like a redshirt freshman, Carter Smith, could very well be the left tackle for the Hoosiers this season. There's been some talk about how good of a camp he has had. He's practiced with the first team through almost all of fall camp and has held his own. And so there's a good chance there's a redshirt freshman starting for the Hoosiers at left tackle this season in Carter Smith. There's some other guys that have been around. Joshua Sales, another guy who has been around. Uh, this is a, a, a group that has experience with the starters. There's not a lot of experience in its depth, though. You have redshirt sophomores and freshmen, largely. Uh, Max Longman is a redshirt senior. The Hoosiers got him out of the transfer portal. He's a good depth piece. Uh, he comes from UMass. So it's going to be interesting to see how things play out. But the vibes are good, at least right now, as we talk on Monday, heading into week one. The vibes about the offensive line are good. 
And that alone is an accomplishment. Because when's the last time the vibes felt good about the offensive line? It's been years. So we'll see if the vibes are still good at, you know, game starts at 3.30 Saturday. If at 7 o'clock we'll, we'll get a take on what the vibes are like. But right now, it's a good feeling. Hope this got, helped you guys. I tried to add a little bit enough for every dayers that are tuning in to, to get a little sense of this as well. But these are going to be your biggest storylines to watch heading into week one. Thank you guys for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. Every dayers this week on the show again. We'll have your recruiting show. We'll have a crossover with Locked on Buckeyes. We're going to have some more preview stuff as well. Uh, to get you all set for this game against Ohio State. Make sure you follow us on Twitter if you haven't already, at LO underscore Hoosiers. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave those ratings and reviews. Helps us out immensely. Most importantly, though, guys, it's game week. Hope you get through your Monday well. And as always, LEO.